name is Christian A. Smith. I'm the pastor and founder of the Faith Community based in Atlanta, Georgia. We are a uh, disruptive, authentic, and inclusive church. That's, the, that's our promise to those who um, encounter us, whether virtually or physically. Um, we believe in radical inclusion of all of God's people regardless of where they come from, how they're sexually oriented, their gender identity, uh, at the core of everything that we believe and everything that we do is the greatest commandment according to Jesus, which says that your love for God, and I'm paraphrasing here, your love for God is expressed through how you love your neighbor as yourself. So we believe you can't love God if you don't love your neighbor and you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. So we strongly believe in breaking down the stigmas surrounding love for self and helping people to understand what that truly means in totality as that will help us to live out our love for God as we go through life. You know, it's funny because as I think about your question my hopes are tied to my fears and vice versa. My hope is that oppressed people would understand that justice is a joint effort and that if we come together and create communities of allyship and support each other and uplift each other, that were literally unstoppable. I'm reminded of the work that Fred Hampton did before he was assassinated by uh, Chicago PD and the FBI, bringing people together of different backgrounds. He brought Black Panthers together with poor white people, with Latinx people into this coalition to seek justice in their communities, which was highly uncommon. And that was such a threat to the status quo of the establishment that he was assassinated while he laid in his bed. So it's scary and hopeful at the same time, because I would love to see us do that. I also understand that if, if we do it, there's such a large target on our backs if we do it successfully. So I'm fully aware of that. Uh, but you know, with that being my hope, that's also my fear that we'll never get it, that we'll never understand how powerful we are when we come together. Even if we look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus did not do the bulk of his work in isolation. He did it in community. He, he approached his ministry collaboratively with others. And my hope is that we'll understand that the image of God is, is sacred in all of us. And if I could get Black people to stop fighting with other Black people who think differently or look differently or live differently or love differently, wow, what, what could we do as a people, as, as a straight male pastor who leads a inclusive ministry. I have a lot of conversations with other straight clergy people and other straight Christians who tend to think that gay black people or LGBTQ plus black people are like separate from us. And I constantly remind them they are us. We're in this fight together. And if we seek freedom that does not include them, that will be a fleeting form of freedom. Uh, because I truly believe that if we don't all get free, then none of us are actually free. So that's my hope and my fear. My hope is that we get it and my fear is that we won't. So as far as marking this time and lamenting with hope or through hope. That begins first with having conversations with my community. Every church, every community of faith is different. And 
we're all facing different challenges. So as I mentioned earlier, the challenge with the faith community, the church where I pastor, isn't so much we've had so much loss of life during the past 18 months because we haven't, thank God. Uh, but we've been faced with a lot of change. We've had to grieve some of the experiences that we never got to have. I have a lot of ministers in my church, many of them uh, seminary trained or currently going through seminary. And for some of them, half of their seminary journey was spent in pandemic. So there were a lot of experiences, a lot of conversations they didn't get to have in the hallways of seminary, which many times is where you learn the most by just having some of those conversations. So it starts with having conversations with people in community to figure out what do we need during this time? What is meaningful to us? What will help us to push forward and to mark this time? And I believe that um, we should always make room for lament because I believe lament is tied to hope. If we, if we don't lament, we become numb. And then there goes the hope. And one of the biggest challenges of justice-oriented people in this society is to resist the temptation to go numb. So we must lament and we must keep hope that we can be better, we can experience better, and we can have better. <laughs>